Ashford, Alabama, where tonight it's going to be the Ashford Yellow Jackets against the Bullock County Stingin' Hornets. My name is Bobby Price, along with uh, Mick Kirkland. And Mick, we're in for Marlon Burner here in Ashford tonight. Yeah, we're looking for a real exciting game tonight between these two teams. Both of them are of the B persuasion. You have the Stingin' Hornets of uh, Bullock County and the Yellow Jackets of Ashford. And quickly, number 32 gets the tip and uh, shoots it. Rebounded by number 25, uh, Dossie, but he's unable to put the basket in, so turnover number one for Ashford. Right, the Stingin' Hornets pass it around. Uh, we have number 20, DuBose, and he shoots it over to Takeri. Over to 14, Wims. Back out to number 20 again, Randy DuBose, as the Stingin' Hornets from Bullet County Try to get something going here in the early going. You know, Bobby, this is the time of the game where the coaches are trying to fill out each other's uh, uh, team, you know, to see what they do, whether they attack the ba basket or go to a perimeter game. So I think both coaches and the players are just trying to fill things out right now. I think you're right. The first foul of the night is committed by Chris Williams for the Yellow Jackets. So the, uh, the Hornets continue with uh, their possession. All the way over to Thad Perry, all back to the corner, over to number 20, DuBose. And they are they're sending it back and forth. They take a three-point shot, and it's uh, rebounded by number 25 for the Jackets, Jamie Dawsey, and he's fouled. That time, DuBose pulled up for a three, but he wasn't able to get it to fall for him. And uh, in the process, Villa uh, County committed the foul, so that worked out to Ashford's advantage. That's true, and we have one foul each on each squad and turnovers on each squad. So as they settle down, Nick Lee takes a long three-point shot, and it's no good, but rebounded by Dawsey to Fields. Fields comes around and sets it up at the top of the key. Over to Lee, back to Fields again, and he takes a three-point shot, and it's no good. Rebounded by number 42 for Bullock County, uh, Michael Kimber. Uh, both times down court for both teams, Bobby, what we've seen is both of them take shots from the outside and try three-point uh, baskets. Uh, I don't know whether they're trying to set the tempo or what, but uh, both teams missed. Uh, 34, Willie Penn took a shot to the basket, uh, couldn't sink it. And they take another shot again, but Fields gets a rebound. And uh, we got a throw out of bounds by number 20, uh, Randy DuBose, playing great defense for the Hornets. All right, Fields over to Lee. Back to Fields again. As they try to set up something, looking for maybe something on the inside, but nothing going so far. Uh, inside that time to Lee, but uh, he couldn't, he got the shot off. But didn't make it, but we had a foul under the basket. That was a nice looking pass under the basket to Lee, and he was fouled. And I think uh, they're starting to try to get the inside game to work. Last time down, they tried an outside three point shot and were unsuccessful. And that time, they decided to try to take it inside and uh, was fouled. William Penn is charged with a foul on that. And the first point of the game is scored off a foul. And number 23 puts it in, Nick Lee. Uh, for the Ashford Yellow Jackets. Almost two minutes gone in the first period of play, and it's the first point of the night for either team. Lee's second shot up, and he sinks it. It's 2 nothing. So at that time, Ashford came up with some points off foul shots by driving the ball inside, and uh, Lee made two foul shots. All right, Hornet set up, sets up their play with Randy Dubose over to 14. Uh, who is Mims, and uh, who took the shot? That was a nice drive to the basket by Randy DeBose. He went between defenders and put it up and in. Fields drives the basket, going inside. Uh, misses. Uh, 32 gets the rebound. Uh, Chris Williams, and he couldn't put it in. So it's still a tie ball game. 2-2 to score. Another three-point attempt by Bullock County, and it's no good. Mims took a long shot there and uh, unable to make it. Lee traveling the basket, feeds it over to his teammate, number 25, Dossie, who misses. Hornets on the move now. That time you saw excellent, excellent hustle and uh, tenacity by the Ashford 
on the offensive board. They came up empty, but they showed a lot of effort. And, and if they continue to show that kind of resilience on the backboards, they're going to have some big things to happen for them. That they're going to have to do. And, and, and uh, Gerbrick can maintain possession here, or at least get the turnover. So uh, number 32, uh, Chris Williams, uh, made a great play. So Ashford keeps the ball. Fields at the top. No good. Hornets slow it down. We get a steal. Fields. They come out and set it up. Over to Lee. To Fields. And he's going to shoot it back out to Lee. Now they're going to look over in the corner to uh, number 32, Williams. And to Dawson, he throws it away. Both these schools are ice cold here, Mitt. Oh, yeah, that time, uh, that was an excellent opportunity for Bullock County to, to take the lead, and they miss an opportunity. And that time, number 23, Lee, Lee drives it in and puts it in for Ashford. So Ashford puts on the full court press, and uh, the Hornets get it across. They set up their play now to work their offense. But so far, this is a very low-scoring game. Only six points have been scored, and uh, we've had... Uh, we only have 347 left in the first period, so uh, the score has been low so far. LaMarvin Jackson gets the rebound, and uh, Lee drives the basket and makes it, but in the process, he travels. So it's a turnover on the Yellow Jackets. Full court press continues for Ashford, almost throwing it away. That was a good defensive effort by number 32. For Ashford, but Chris Williams, he almost came up with the steal that time. He hung with him all the way down to across midcourt. And uh, time to play great defense. 14 Mims takes a shot and misses. We have a rebound, but under the basket, number five gets it, Lamarvin Jackson. Bullock County continues to take those outside shots. Uh, maybe they are a three-point shooting team because they've made quite a few tips from the outside. We had a shot from uh, 25, Jamie Dossie. He missed, so it's still a 4-2 game with Ashford on top of the stinging Hornets from Bullock County. Number 20 with the ball, that's uh, DuBose, and he shoots it over to number 35, Perry. And we get a turnover. Yellow Jackets now have it. Lee comes down, takes a three-point shot. And he's long. So the last two times down the court, Ashford have gone for three-point shots and come up empty both times. Uh, and, you know, the times they've taken the ball inside, they've uh, managed to get points uh, both times. Well, they like to, to shoot from three points watching these guys play over the last uh, few days. Uh, we have a foul call on Fields. So at the free throw line will be number 21, uh, DeCarlis Hooks for the Stinging Hornets from Bullock County. His first shot is up, and it's in there. It's a 4-3 contest now with 2.25 to go in the first period of play. He was at the uh, in the process of shooting, so he gets a second attempt. Number 21 throws it up, and it falls in good. Uh, DeCarlis Hook sinks it, ties it up, four all. We'll see if Ashford takes it in this time. That's where they've had the most success so far in this game. Trying to go inside to Dawson. He takes a jump shot, and it's long. And they are unable to uh, get the rebound. Nice move by number 20. Uh, Randy DuBose puts it in, and they take the lead 6-4. to four. That was an impressive move by DuBose. He uh, went between defenders, popped a couple of times, and put it up and in. And Fields uh, uh, is, is called for traveling. So another turnover by the Yellow Jackets. Ashford's got to settle things down by the they're, they're, they're taking the first shot that they get instead of working the ball around and, and working for the good shot. So they've got to try and uh, get control of this game. They've fallen behind by two points by taking the ball inside and working it in. And, and if they miss, hopefully get a foul. Well, you, you got to get the rebounds and uh, the height of these uh, stinging Hornets are able to uh, get the rebounds and that's they're going to put points up when they can get two or three chances to put it in. That time, the Hornets did an excellent job of keeping the ball alive on the backboard and putting it up and getting the points. 
All right, Lee shoots it over to Fields, back to uh, to Lee again. And to Dawsey, back to uh, Lee. Trying to go inside, throws it away. So that's three straight turnovers for uh, Ashford, and uh, Will account has been able to score off Ashford's turnovers. They've got to sell things down and, and get back into this game. That they have, and... Uh, you know, when you get into uh, this particular uh, area of a tournament to advance, you got to play great ball, both offensively and defensively, and uh, we're not seeing that on, on uh, the Ashford squad at this point. That was Kimber, Bobby. He was tough under that board that time. He just kept at it, kept at it. He, he positioned himself to get the rebound and put it back up and made the basket. All right, Fields is getting... Uh, Guarded pretty closely over there. Tries to throw it in to Dawsey. And we're going to get a foul. A traveling. Another turnover. So Ashford's committed four turnovers here in the last couple of minutes. And uh, Bullock County is on a run. They've scored 10 points to Ashford's four. So they've got to settle down a little bit. Bullock County's in a 2 3 defense, and they're packing it in down low, and it's hard for Ashford to get the ball inside. With less than a half a minute to go, I'm sure Bullock County is going to try to go for one shot here. Uh, but we get a steal by number 32, and he is unable to make it and foul. 32 is uh, Chris Williams, and uh, he is really nailed as he went up for that one. And he'll get to come to the line, and he'll shoot two with 13 seconds to go in the first period. So that was a good move by Chris Williams, anticipating where the pass was going and stealing the ball. And that's one positive thing that's happened for Ashford in the last few minutes. And they that's haven't right. had very many positive things to happen. So maybe this will give them a spark uh, to get things going in that direction again. Well, they've been so close to uh, getting steals on several occasions. Uh, and they got it that time. And Fields put, uh, excuse me, uh, he put the first one up and made it. Williams makes the first one, misses the second one, but they get the rebound. And with eight seconds to go, Fields shoots a long three-pointer, misses. Rebounded by a host of players. Finally, Dossie puts it in for a two-point basket. So it went from uh, 10 to 4 to 10 to 7 at the end of the first period. So what Astra showed that time on the boards, they kept at it. The ball bounced off. They put it back and just kept at it until they got the ball to fall their way and came up with two points. Well, I think we're going to see both squads saddling down now. We're going to see them getting their offense going. And uh, we'll get back and talk to you about the second period of play. After these messages right now, the score at the end of the first period is Bullock County 10, Ashford uh, High School 7. We'll be back after this timeout. Okay, welcome back to the second period. Mitt, I'll let you take over here. I kind of the first period was uh, kind of a slow-paced game. Everybody started coming out, shooting from the outside, and and not very successful on either teams. And then they start uh, Bullock County start pounding the ball inside and was very uh, persistent on the board and came up with some big shots to uh, put some points on the board. That's right, number 12, Christopher Tarver, who's come in the game from the, from the change in the possessions uh, of, of, the, of the quarter, and uh, he took a long shot, ill-advised, missed it, so Ashford's back on the attack. Fields tried to go up and missed it. Excuse me, Lee, and then Fields uh, tried to put it in, and uh, he could not make it. Then number five, Lamarvin Jackson, uh, tried to get a rebound. He couldn't put it in, so we have a whistle under the basket. At number 24, Fields goes to the free throw line. Bobby, if you notice, like I keep saying, when Ashford takes the ball inside, positive things are happening. That time they took it in, they kept banging the boards, didn't get it to go in for them, but they were fouling. That's what they've got to do is find a way to get the ball in down low and get some offensive rebounds and some put bites uh, to be able to, to win this game. That's right. And uh, able to, to sink one of two there, narrowed the, uh, the deficit to two points. It's 10 to 8 now with Bullock County on top. Number 20, Dubose. And they go inside to their big guy, number 42, who saw no opening. And they take a shot, it's missed. Everybody trying to rebound. 
Number 42, Riddick Kimber, still can't put it in. And he's gonna be fouled by, a two-shot foul by number 24, Henry Fields for Ashford. That time, Bullock County did an excellent job of keeping the ball alive and blocking out and preventing Ashford from getting the ball, and they just kept banging at it, banging at it until uh, they were fouled, and uh, they're going to the line. That's uh, number 42, Kimber at the line for the Stinging Hornets. Well, we've got the heights for the uh, Yellow Jackets. We do not have the heights for the others, but uh, looking player to player, they are taller all the way around over, over these Ashford Yellow Jackets. I tell you, but Bullock County has consistently continued to take three points a tenth. Yes, and, they have. Uh, we're yet to see them hit anything from the outside. He missed both uh, both his attempts, and uh, number five, uh, Lamarvin Jackson, gets the, the rebound, and now they get to try their offense again. We have a couple of new players in: uh, number 22, Anthony Crawford, and Terrence Thomas. Number 10, Thomas with the ball now. Sets up a new uh, line of defense, uh, offense there. And Lee just tries to go inside. It's blocked. Number 25 takes a shot. Jamie Dawsey, and it's blocked, and he's fouled. That was number 21 committed to foul. Uh, that was uh, Hooks called for the foul, and it's his second personal foul. And Dawsey, he is listed as 6'6 on the charts, and uh, he's about the tallest Ashford player on the court tonight. And uh, several of their players or somewhere around 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. His first shot's up and in. So Ashford, like I, I keep saying, I can't say it enough, Bobby, success for Ashford has been in the paint. That's right, and uh, getting the rebounds. And he sinks the second one, so they tie this thing up after being down four points. It's been uh, it's been quite some time since Bullock County put a, put uh, put something in in the basket. Lee guarding pretty closely there uh, to uh, number 11. Wide up, uh, number 11 takes almost takes a wide open three point shot, but uh, number 12 comes in. Christopher Tarver he drives the basket, puts it in for two. That time Bullock County showed a lot of patience. Working the ball around, they looked like they were going to take an outside shot, but uh, Tarver drove it down and banked it off the glass and put it in. Ashford uh, taking several, of uh, trying to move the ball around. Uh, a long shot by Crawford misses, and uh, Terrence Thomas uh, got the rebound, and he was fouled in the process. So uh, Ashford will maintain possession under the basket. 16 now. Number 15, uh, Daryl Rogers coming in for the Stinging Hornets now as number 12, Tarver, goes out. Into Crawford. Hey, he comes out to set up their play to uh, Terrence Thomas. Crawford over to Lee in the corner. And now he brings it out and sets up uh, a play to Crawford to Lee. To Terrence Thomas. They're being a little bit more uh, free and slowing the offense down. Trying to get something open on the inside. And number 25 takes his shot, Jamie Dawsey, and he sinks it. Ties it up again. That time, Ashford showed a lot of patience. They, they weren't in a hurry to get a shot off. They worked it around until Dawsey got open. He pulled up for a jumper, and he made it. So the Hornets get their opportunity now. Uh, they're moving it around quite uh, quickly. Number 20 takes his jump shot. It's long. Uh, that is DuBose, and he misses. And we get a foul called on number 42. And that is... Uh, uh, Michael that? Kimber. Kimber, okay. So uh, I, think, I think we're in the one and one. So... Uh, yeah, Ashford will be going to the line uh, to shoot uh, one and one at the line for Ashford, number 25. That's Jamie Dawson. And he's already uh, sank a couple of shots here just uh, moments ago to tie it up at 10. And the score now tied at 12-12 with 445 left in the first half. Make it 13-12. 
So Ash was taking the first lead from early in the game when they led by a score of four to four to two. And uh, they trailed the entire game. It's been tired a couple of times, but uh -huh. this is the first time they've taken the lead since early in the game. He's perfect, perfect from the line, four for four, and they take a two-point lead in this contest. We get it. We get a reaching in foul uh, on on. Uh, let's see who we're going to call it on. Number ten, uh, Terrence Thomas is called for the foul at the free throw line. Is number forty-two for the Hornets. You know, so far in the game, neither team has been able to get that out the outside game going. We've seen. Probably one jump shot. Ashford's made uh, one jump shot from the outside to go in for him, but the other shots have been made off foul shots or either shots under the basket. And they missed uh, both the free throws and uh, just uh, by continuous effort from uh, number five, Lamarvin Jackson, 6'6", six, six, finally gets to tip it away and Ashford got the ball. Bullock County has not done a good job of uh, hitting their foul shots and uh, that could come back late in the game to hunt them. So uh, if they want to stay in this game, they've got to do a better job of uh, making their foul shots. Uh, Darcy, try, uh, excuse me, Crawford trying to take a sh an ill-advised shot there, and they turn it over, unable to put uh, points on the scoreboard. 3.54 left in the first half. It's 14 for Ashford, 12 for Bullock County. And they call a foul. I thought they were calling a jump ball that time, but I guess he grabbed his arm, Bobby. And so uh, that's two quick fouls on number 42, Michael Kimber. And Ashford will be going to the line uh, from now to the end of the first half. I was trying to see how many fouls he had gotten on him. I knew that's two quick ones. Yeah, I, th I think he has two fouls on him. Uh, the last time he fouled, I think they said he had one, so. He has two fouls on him, and he's uh, look like he's one of their top players, and he can get in foul trouble early. All right, Lamarvin Jackson's at the uh, uh, free throw line. Damon Love comes in. Terrence Thomas goes to the bench with a two-point lead with 3:45 left in the first half. They missed the front end of the one and one, so the Hornets are on the attack again. DuBose, and we get a we get a uh, turnover. Number five, Lamarvin Jackson gets it. Lee trying to travel to the basket, and he's going to be called for. Uh, uh, he's going to be coming to the line. The foul is going to be on number 15 for the Hornets. Rogers. That time the uh, player from Bullock County didn't quite have his feet set. So when uh, number 23 went in, that's. Uh, 23 is uh, Nick Lee drove to the basket. Uh, he was fouled. All right, it's a one and one. First shot's up, misses. Rebounded there by Dossie, but uh, number 15 took it away from him. That's so that. Hornets on the attack. Darren Rogers was uh, very, that was a very heads up play by Rogers. He didn't get the rebound, but as soon as Dossie came down with it, he just snatched it out of, out of his hands. Damon Love gets a turnover for Ashford now. That's Damon Love coming up with that turnover for Ashford. He just came into the game. Nice little jump shot there by number 25. Uh, Jamie Dossie puts two more in for the uh, Yellow Jackets. It's 16 to 12. That time they did a good job of looking for the man down low and hitting him low, and he put it up and made the basket. Fields saved it. And uh, Coach Fields, <laughs> wants, Coach, uh, Coach Henry. Henry, wants a timeout. That, that was a good hustle by Fields that time, saving the ball from going out of bounds. And uh, Coach Henry, Henry called a timeout. He wanted to talk things over with these guys. They they come from behind, but I've been taking a four-point lead. But one thing Ashford's got to do, they've got to hit those free throws. Last time down, they missed the front end of a one-and-one. And that could be costly later on in the game. Very true. They, in fact, the last uh, two attempts they had, 
Uh, they missed the front end of the one and one. And you just, uh, you know, those, you know, that's uh, that's lost points when you don't put those things in. And at this point in time in the season, they ought to be hot at the free throw line. So it's a 16-12 game with 2:28 left in the first half. The Yellow Jackets leading the Stinging Hornets. All right, uh, we've got uh, Lee barking out signals. Damon Love comes up to the point now. Back over to Lee. Back to Love again. Crawford goes inside to Lee. Damon Love gets it now as he shoots and he misses. Hornets get the rebound. That time uh, he took a shot and it bounced off the rim and there were three stinging Hornets around waiting on the rebound. Uh, Penn took, took a jump shot and missed. 34 got the rebound and he took a shot and missed and that was Penn. And then uh, number 34 in the game, Neil Brackett gets the rebound. Nice drive to the basket by Love. He missed, but he goes back up. That, that was Brackett, sorry. That he stayed Brackett. with it, got his rebound, and put it in for two points. Six-point lead with a minute and a half. So Brackens is new into the game, and he comes in and makes a big play. They take a shot. Number 34 gets the rebound, but this time we got the fast break going. Crawford puts it up. It misses. And we got a traveling call on the Hornets. That's the fast, uh, first fast break we've seen these uh, Yellow Jackets run so far tonight, Bobby. But they got it out and had a good look at the basket, and it just rolled off the rim and didn't go in. Just a little bit, uh, the, the touch was not quite soft enough, but uh, they get a break, get the traveling call, and with a minute 10, they still have the ball. I'll tell you, so far, the, uh, the Hornets have not hit a single outside shot. All of their points have come from the inside, and uh, they, are, they just have been cold from the outside. But they are still trying, and maybe they're outside shooting team and just trying to establish an outside game to yep. move the actual defense out more. All right, we have a call, a, a foul call on Jamie Dossie. So uh, the Jackets turn it over this time down. Damon Love guarding mighty close with a minute to go in the half. The Hornets trying to put something up here with uh, they're down six points with 50 seconds and counting in the half. Number 12 took his shot and missed. Tarver. And who are we going to call the foul on? Basket's good. 22. Crawford. That time, Penn went up strong. And, uh, Tried to put the ball back up, and he was fouled. So he'll be at the line. He'll have two opportunities. Well, he he got the basket, so uh, he's going to sink this one. Right, so and makes, makes a it a three-point three play. Yeah. Ashford quickly moves it down. Lee with uh, a little over a half a minute to go. To Bracken, back to Lee. Soft touch to the basket, makes it. That was a good look by Lee. He dribbled, he pulled up, and he let it go, and it went through. Five-point lead here with uh, about 15 seconds. Well, let's, let's make it a two-point lead as a uh, big three-point is drained by number 14, uh, Mims. And they get a steal. Can tie it. That look at that great block. anticipation by number 22 for Ashford. He waited. That was Crawford. He let him get a, he let him get ahead of him, Bobby, and he just waited and he and he blocked the shot. That was great uh, defense by Crawford. Save that two point for sure. He took a three point uh, uh, shot and missed it. They could have gone in with a tie game here, but great effort on num by number 22, Anthony Crawford. And uh, they keep them from tying the game up, and it's a two-point lead for Ashford to have. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we keep talking about uh, Bullet County shooting from outside, and that time they finally got an outside shot to fall from, and it was a big three-pointer. Yes, it was, and almost got another one at the buzzer. So it's uh, it's been, uh, it was kind of slow and sluggish in the first period, not much better in the second, but they seem to be getting a little bit more on track. 
Yeah, that time Ashford scored a total of uh, 13 points in the second period where Bullock County scored eight. So Ashford outscored Bullock County by five points in the second period. So uh, as we regather our momentum here and the coaches talk it over with each squad, we'll see what happens when they come back out in the third period of play. So at the half, it's a two-point lead for the Ashford Yellow Jackets over the Stinging Hornets from Bullock County. We'll be back with third quarter action at County. It's a 2018 lead for Ashford here. Uh, low scoring game, but uh, we've seen plenty of excitement. Lots of fouls called as well. Yes, we've seen a lot of action in this game. Bobby. Both teams uh, started out trying to uh, establish an outside game, and both of them were unsuccessful, and they started moving the ball inside and start scoring points. And uh, Bullock County hadn't been able to score any outside shots to about 10 to 15 seconds left in the first half, and they hit a big three-pointer. Now, Astros has, has had some success from some mid-range outside shots. They've been a few shots from out there, but they've been very successful down low in the paint, putting points on the board. They're also a, Ashford is also a good fast break team, and but we've, only, we've seen no points scored off the fast break. The Ashford had a good run late in the half, but they were unable to put it in. Fields and Lee combine up here, and they send it over to number 32, Chris Williams. Back out to Lee, over to Fields, and uh, they exchange it back and forth, trying to get an open shot. Fields comes out to the top now to set it up. Lee goes around. Back to Fields at the top, and to Lee almost a throwaway. Ashford just slowing it down, trying to get the defense to come out to him. Ashford showing a lot of patience on offense here, Bobby. They're working to try to get some good shots up. And that time, number 24 drove it to the basket and That's put it, it in, Henry That's Fields. Yeah, Henry Fields puts it in for a two-point basket. And uh, they put the first points on the, on the scoreboard in the third period. And we get a rebound by number 34 for, uh, for Bullock County. That's uh, Willie Penn, and he gets it in for two. And it's now two-point lead again for Ashford. Penn has been really strong on the boards, uh, getting a lot of rebounds and put bites, and uh, that time he came up and put the ball in, and Ashford goes down and turns the ball over. Yep, Fields uh, took his eye off the ball, and it uh, went away. And uh, uh, Coach Henry wants to talk to him for a minute, so he puts Crawford into the game. We continue now. 6.45 uh, left in the third period. The Hornets on the attack, and we get a jump ball. That was a great hustle by number 23 for Ashford. Um, Nick, Nick Lee. Lee tying that ball up and almost coming up, uh, forcing a turnover. And uh, that time he didn't get it, but next time he will. All right, we're back under action now. Number 20 with the ball, uh, Dubose. They try to set up a play here. Back out to DeBose at the top. He looks for a long shot, but uh, does not. But number 14 takes one, and he drains it. Desmond Mims and uh, Bullock County goes back on top by one. Scores 23-22. And we talked earlier in the game how Bullock County just kept making those attempts from the outside and uh, maybe that's their game plan is to hit some three-pointers and they've hit two three-pointers in a row but Crawford, that time Ashford answers. <laughs> Crawford puts it in for three nothing but net they go back on top by two. So we've had consecutive three-point baskets by both teams and Lee gets a turnover feeds it to Crawford and it's uh, blocked by the Hornets and Ashford uh, gets a gets a turnover down And they still can't put it in. But Ashford maintains possession. The Hornets recovered quickly on that turnover, but uh, they kept Ashford from putting an easy two-point basket in. Bobby, you you talk about how good of a fast break team Ashford is, but the two fast breaks they've uh, had tonight, they came up empty both times. Crawford tried to take another three-pointer there and uh, missed it. So Hornets back in action. That big guy, Dubose, number 20, and he sends it over to number 34 for them. Uh, Penn, and he tries to take a shot, and it's long. And uh, 
Chris Williams gets the rebound. That time Bullock kind of pulled up for a shot and missed, and Ashford came up strong with the rebound. And they are on offense, and they're taking that time. Chris Williams into Dawkins. Uh, Dossie, excuse me. Back over to Lee. To Crawford, who sank a three a couple of minutes ago. And they try to go inside at number five. And uh, it's knocked out of bounds by DeCarlis Hooks for the Stinging Hornets. Ashford gets to maintain possession. That time, uh, Bullock County anticipated where the ball was going and knocked it out of bounds. They almost came up with the steal, which was would be uh, very damaging to this Ashford team. That's right. Uh, Fields uh, comes into the game as for, for Ashford as number 12, uh, Christopher Tarver for the Hornets. Okay, in the game for Ashford is number 23. It was Nick Lee, number 24. It was uh, Henry Fields, number five. Uh, Jackson, number 25, Dawsey, and number 32 is Chris Williams. We had a couple of jackets taking shots there, but uh, unable to put it in. The Hornets finally get control, and they're back on offense now. Dubose with it. Turnaround jumper by 34. Uh, Willie Penn and he puts it in for two and to tie it up at four minutes to go in the third period. That time Penn got a good look at the basket, banked it off the glass and put it in to tie the score at 25 all with 3.55 left in the third period. All right, Fields shoots it over to Henry, back to Field, to Lee again, I'm sorry. I get these names together. It's Lee, back over to Henry. And then he gives it to 32, Chris Williams. Henry Fields, number 24. Lee, number 23. Goes inside to uh, Jackson, and he misses. Hornets on the attack. And they keep, uh, Ashford keeps them from scoring, but the Hornets came down with the ball. Great anticipation by number 32 for Ashford. And, and Lee get that first fast break calls of the night. Chris Williams spin it off to Lee, and they get a turnover under the basket, and the Jackets get it back. So that time, two positive things in a row happened for the Yellow Jackets. The first successful fast break of the game, and uh, Bullock County turns the ball over, so Ashford gets the ball back. And Coach Huffman for the Hornets uh, wants to talk it over with his troops. As uh, Coach Henry gets his guys together, they talk it over with 2.56 left in the third period, a two-point lead for Ashford. 27-25, and uh, both teams have come out this second half and put some points on the board, and uh, it's uh, it's going to get that. This game is going to be tight down to the wire. It could go either way, Bobby. What I'm seeing is both teams showing uh, sparks of uh, sparks of, uh, of uh, energy and getting some things going and then other times it's the other team so we are seeing a few momentum changes and the team with momentum in the end is probably the team that's going to pull it out Henry Fields feel, sends it in to Lee they come back out to set it up now Ashford with a two point lead Henry Fields uh, took a shot but uh Saved by number 25, Jamie Dawson. Fields. Looks to lead. Sends it over to his teammate, 32, Chris Williams. Back to Henry and then over to Lee. To Daw uh, number 25, Jamie Dawson. He gets the roll in. It's now a four-point lead for Ashford. That time, Ashford showed a lot of patience, just passing the ball around until they could find an open man. And that time, Dawson pulled up for a short jumper, and he got the roll in the basket counted. Alertness on uh, number 32, Chris Williams, almost got him a turnover off the Hornets again, but uh, he couldn't keep it in bounds. Uh, Chris Williams was, uh, did an excellent job of anticipating where the ball was going and almost came up with the steal. So Ashford's got to continue to play aggressive defense like that, and that time he did. 
and that's exactly what Ashford needed. And they get two more points off the fast break. Nick Lee puts it in for two. He was tempted for the dunk, but uh, he decided he might better not do it. I tell you what, you got to credit that play to number 32, Chris Williams, who almost made a steal on the previous play, and he just kept at it, and he made a steal on the next play, and uh, stole the ball and got it down, and they scored. We had a mistake on a call on the referee there. He called it Ashford ball, and, and uh, the other officials came over quickly, corrected it. It's still Hornet ball. Uh, they feed it in quickly, takes a three-point shot, and it uh, is no good. Ashford gets a rebound, back on offense. To Crawford in the corner, and then uh, to 25, Dawson. Number 32 puts it in. That is Chris Williams, and he is fouled in the process. So Williams has stepped up his level of play. He seemed to be the spark that's got these yellow jackets going, Bobby. He came up with the steal to uh, an assist for the basket, and that time he drove to the basket, and uh, he was fouled, so uh, he's going to the line. Uh, he gets an opportunity to pick up a three-point play here. Is number 32, Chris Williams for Ashford. And uh, I like his move. He just like he just nonchalantly throws it up there, and most of the time it goes in. 34-25. Just over a minute in the third period. One is trying to get some offense going. Nice block. Nice block by LaMarvin Jackson. And nobody can sink it. Ashford gets the rebound. That time, Bullock County kept the ball alive on the board, but Ashford kept it alive, too. They blocked out and managed to get the rebound. Now, Ashford has the game, has the ball with uh, about 45 seconds left in the third period. Nick Lee with the ball over to Henry Fields. Fields goes to the basket, and he's going to be charged for, for uh, with a foul. Not a charge there. Number 42 paid the price there. He bit the dust hard. Hitting the, hitting the floor was Michael Kimber. That time, Fields went in a little out of control. Uh, he probably should have pulled the ball back out, Bobby. He went out in out of control and uh, was called for the charge. And so, Bullock County gets the ball back and they get an opportunity to put some points on the board before the end of the third period. Damon Love comes into the game and uh, uh, Henry Fields goes to the sidelines as he picked up another foul. 33 seconds and counting in the third period. Great defense on behalf of number 32, Chris Williams. Williams is playing some outstanding defense, Bobby. He's putting a lot of pressure on those uh, on that bullet count on the bullet county guards. He and Nick Lee are teaming up, really stepping up the defense. And we get a reach again foul by number 14, Damon Love. And I, I see the Bullock County players uh, motioning that the basket should be good, but I think that was before the he went up with the shot. It was. So he's standing at the line. He's hoping the official will say, okay, well, it, it, it's a two-shot foul. But uh, he was not in the act of shooting right. when he was fouled. So, and I think that's what the officials are discussing. I think we're going to go with, uh, yeah. They don't get the basket. And they don't go to the free throw line. But that was a good attempt by Bullock County trying to influence the officials' decision. Jamie Dawsey really springing up like a springboard. Uh, number 20 throws it to the basket. and uh, But he can't put it in. To Damon Love, to 32 Chris Williams, and uh, they miss it. What an effort by number 32 Chris Williams and number 23 Nick Lee in this third period as Ashford has opened up a nine point lead with just eight minutes to go in this contest. Yeah, I, I tell you what, Ashford did an excellent job in the third period of coming out playing aggressive. Uh, defense and you got to give credit to Chris Williams he was the spot that got that yellow jacket team fired up in the third period to, to gain this nine-point lead 
Yes, he did. Uh, just great defense and just hustle. Caused a couple of turnovers, and they were able to cash in on those and, uh, and build this nine-point lead, which is the biggest lead of the night for either squad. Astor just has the better half of it. That but time it, Ashford came out and they scored 14 points and uh, Bullock County was only able to score seven. So they doubled their point output to take this nine point lead. All right, into the game for the first time tonight is going to be number 21, Sean Mills for Ashford. Oh, we need to take a 30 second timeout and we'll be back with the fourth period of action. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Okay, welcome back to the fourth period of play as Ashford continues now with uh, this nine-point lead, just eight minutes to go in the game. Officials still talking it over, and it's going to be Ashford ball. Bobby, if you have to sum things up so far in this game, uh, most of the baskets have been made inside, but we saw uh, Ashford get, be become a little more aggressive in that third period on the defensive side, and, and it, it allowed them to get some more points on the board offensively. Sean Mills uh, moved it around 32. Jamie Dawsey, uh, number 25, Jamie Dawsey put it in for two for Ashford. It's 11 point lead now. A steal by wow. number 32. That was Chris Williams, Bobby. I tell you, that guy, he has come out this second half and he is really playing some tough defense which is really opening things up for Ashford on the offensive end of the court. How many times is it, Mitt, when the spark is done by one of the shortest guys on the court? I tell you, these little guys, they come out there and they, you think they're at a disadvantage, but most of them are so quick and they can anticipate and get in position and, uh, and make big plays during the game. And that time, I tell you, well, we've called his name quite a few times in the second half. Number 32, Chris Williams. He has played a well of a game defensively and he's had some key baskets too. Uh, the first uh, free throw attempt from Sean Mills was good as is the second one. So it's a 37 25 game now. 36 25. So this is the largest lead of the game for either team a 12 point uh, a 11 point lead by Ashford. Well, you got to hand it to the Hornets. They stayed in with it and got themselves a two-point basket uh, to shorten the lead a little bit. Dossie nails it from uh, just inside the three-point line. It's 38-27. That time, Williams saw Dossie open in the corner, and he fed him the ball, and he put it up, and he nailed it. The Hornets just can't get it to fall for him. This time, we get another foul call on number 42. That's going to be against uh, uh, Michael Kilmer. Kimber, two-shot foul at the free throw line again is number 21, Sean Mills. I tell you, this Bullock County team, they are banging the boys. They really are, but they just haven't been able to get a lot of things to fall for them. And Ashford is taking advantage of some of the opportunities uh, that have been presented to them. And, They've taken an 11-point lead with 6.44 left in the third period. We got a little bit of break in the action. We had uh, some water, some sweat to get on the floor as they're trying to dry the floor uh, so that uh, you know no one, none of these players uh, will slip and fall. This hardwood is hard, especially when you hit the floor. When they say hardwood, that's exactly what it <laughs> is. I, I've been down there a few times myself, so I know what it feels like. Uh, 644 left in this game. It's a 40 to 27 lead. The Ashford Yellow Jackets leading the Bullock County Stinging, Stinging Hornets by a score of uh, 27, 40 to 27. Getting the uh, steal and putting it in is number 34, Willie Penn. By that time, number five for Ashford, Lamarvin. Jackson was waiting down court and they saw him wide open and got him the ball and he put it up and he was fouling. He'll be going to the line. He, uh, they really closed the pace on, on that on that field because he made his pivot and that Hornet player was, I mean, right on him. And his first shot up falls away no good. Ashford really needs to sink these free throws when they get the opportunity. LaMarvin Jackson misses the first of two. 
we can't uh, stress enough how important it is to make those foul shots because late in the game when teams are trying to come back and maintain the lead there are a lot of fouls committed and if you go to the line and you can't make them it could be the difference in you winning or losing the game that's exactly right and uh, coach Huffman wants to talk it over with his players calling a 30 second timeout with a little break in the action here 41 to 29 lead for the Yellow Jackets with uh, one second less than six and a half minutes to go in the contest a lot of basketball left so far in the second half it's been all Ashford Ashford is it showed a lot of intensity uh, defensively and offensively uh, hitting some big baskets making some big steals and uh, just doing what they need to do to maintain this lead. And also we were talking while we were driving it down here tonight. Uh, this team has been the uh, nemesis against Ashford for the last couple of years. Uh, they've uh, killed their opportunity to move forward and Ashford's wanting a little revenge tonight. Like you said, there's a lot of time left in this game, six and a half minutes, and it's a 12-point lead for Ashford, and they've got to maintain the same level of play that they've been playing uh, the second half. Yeah, they can't let up. Hornets moving around freely. Wide open in the inside, but he traveled. A three-second lane violation. Turnover Hornets. That, that was a good call, Bobby. He just kind of camped out in the lane and he got caught that time and turned the ball over and it worked to Ashford's advantage. Nice dish off by Chris Williams. The Jackets trying to move it around. Lee, the fields. They spread it out. Coaches want to slow it down some. Uh, Coach Henry is, is doing a good job of getting his players to uh, maintain control of the basketball by kind of slowing things down and working and looking for the open man. That time he had number five was wide open under the basket. Uh, Jackson, but he couldn't get it to him. Dossie takes a shot at short, but the rebound, the ball rolled back to them. Lamarvin Jackson. He couldn't put it in, but he was fouled in the process. At the free throw line he goes. Bobby, uh, Bobby you can kind of see the frustration on the uh, players' faces of uh, Willow County, they are getting a little frustrated because they haven't, aren't having much success. Ash was banging the boys and, and, and uh, keeping that ball alive and getting something out of it. And they missed the first free throw attempt. LaMarvin Jackson missing that opportunity. He's still got another one to go. And we just keep talking about making those foul shots, uh, especially late in the game because they can be so important. And he makes the second one. It's a 42-29 game. Five and a half to go. Dubose haven't been calling his number lately, but uh, he's been in there. They take a three-point shot. It's no good. And we get a, a call by, by the official on number 14, Mims. And uh, they get it. Hornets get a turnover. Lose a turnover, I should say. Ashford's leading. This is the biggest lead of the game. Uh, game a 13-point lead, 42 to 29. And that time they turned the ball over. Dossie made a great block there, but he's going to be called for reaching on the back. Gets a uh, foul call. That's number 34, Willie Penn. We've called his name quite a few times tonight. He is really strong and, and tough when he gets it down in the paint. And he's made a couple of uh, jumpers from right about that area, so he's probably pretty good with the free throw line, too. First one's up and in. 12-point lead for Ashford. And he makes the second one. And we get a reach again foul on number 21 for the Hornets. So Ashford uh, is now in the one and one. So at the free throw line will be number 32. Number we called out quite frequently tonight, Chris Williams. Williams has played an excellent game since he's been in this game, Bobby. I'll tell you, this second half, he has definitely played an outstanding game, uh, contributed defensively and offensively, and just, just doing what needs to be done. 
And his move to the to the uh, to the basket from free throw line. Why don't you watch him closely? Uh, he just it's like nonchalantly just throws it up there, and it goes in. Sinks them both. <laughs> so it's a 44-31 game. Ashford back on top by 13 points with just over five minutes left in the fourth period. We if Ashford break. wins this game, they will advance on to the regionals in Troy. Got a little break in the action here. Officials conferring. Not sure what uh, the call was, but they seem to have it straight now. I think they were uh, talking about uh, who made the foul, whether it was number 20 or 21, and I think they cleared that up. All right, the Hornets try to move it across. Ashford guarding mighty closely on defense. They throw up a big three-pointer. Number 14, Desmond Mims puts it in for three. We've seen Mims do that uh, before tonight. He's done that. Uh, he did it earlier, and he came up successful that time and put it in. And the Jackets maintain control. Uh, I don't know how they kept it in, but they did. Lee is just throwing his body everywhere. And he finally gets it to fall in for him. That was a great recovery by Lee. He almost lost the ball, but he maintained control and drove it to the basket and put it up and made the points. The Hornets just uh, doing all they can to try to put points in, throwing up threes. Jackets uh, get the rebound. To Dawson. That was a nice feed to Dawson. Uh, on the fast break and put it up for the basket uh, to give Ashford a 14 point lead, 48 34. We got a. We got a. Timeout. I don't think uh, Bullet County coach likes what he's seen the last couple of minutes, and uh, they've allowed Ashford to get some easy baskets off the fast breaks, and uh, this, this game is kind of getting out of. Uh, out of reach if, if it continues in this direction. Was it a 14 point lead? 14 point lead with just over, uh, just under four minutes left in the game. He's uh, over talking to his players quite calmly and they, they just seem to be relaxed, taking it easy. Uh, but you look over the Ashford players, they all huddled around uh, uh, Coach Henry. And they, they, they smell a victory. I tell you, Ashford's done an excellent job of maintaining control of the game and slowing the pace down, Bob. They're not taking, when they're driving the ball down, they're not taking the first shot they get. They're passing the ball around, looking for the open man, and uh, trying to get a good shot off, and, and they've been very successful with that in the second half. Well, that does two things. Patience takes time off the clock, and you, uh, you're able to get a sure shot in and, and sink it and put points on the board. And that's right now, Bullock County needs the time. Ashford doesn't. So they are trying to use as much of the clock as they can. But that time, they came up with a big three-pointer. Tarver puts it in for three. Well, Marvin Jackson feeds it to number 32 again. And it's two more points. That was a good look by Jackson to get the ball over to Chris Williams for the basket. Uh, alert, alert move here by number 25. Uh, not to foul on that. And uh, almost uh, a, a turnover there, but Ashford does maintain possession. I'll tell you, Bullock County's come out this uh, after that timeout playing a lot more aggressive. They run off five points to cut that lead to 11 points uh, from a 14-point deficit. Ashford went down and scored uh, two points, so they're on a 5-2 to two run right now. That's right. Uh, this 30-second timeout, Coach Henry, Henry wants to tell his guys, hey, we still got 320 to go in the game, and uh, we're only up by 11 points. And uh, they're coming down here shooting threes. I tell you what, they scored five points in less than 30 seconds on two possessions. So they came out of that timeout, and uh, they are definitely stepping up the pace and intensity uh, of this game. I don't think it's over yet. 319 is a lot of time uh, left in this game, especially in shooting those three-pointers. We got a traveling call. Uh, LaMarvin Jackson and uh, Henry Fields got tied up there. 
They got called for the turnover. Hornets for three. Long. Henry Fields gets the rebound. And actually turns the ball over two consecutive times, buddy. That time, nobody came back to meet the ball. Number 24 for Ashford. Um, Fields was, was looking for somebody to pass to, and nobody came back to meet the ball, and they turned it over. He's, he's like he said, never, never land here in these last couple of minutes. So uh, Ashford has uh, got to hang in there with it with three more minutes with an 11-point lead. So uh, what Ashford needs, that was a good play by number 32, Chris Williams. What Ashford needs now is a good defensive stand, prevent Bullock County from scoring and come up with a turnover and get some points off of to increase this lead. Are they going to continue trying to take those three-point shots? There's another one, but they miss. But they get the rebound. Big 42 puts it in for two for the Hornets. That was Michael Kimball. He got in position. Uh, and uh, scored, and so that's four straight points off turnovers. Ashford's kind of letting this thing slip away from them. They've cut the lead from 14 points down to seven. And we get a foul called on number 20 for the Hornets. So what we're seeing by the Bullock County has scored quite a few points off of turnovers. Ashford has turned the ball over three or four times in a row, and Bullock County has put points on the boards each time. And they've uh, they've dwindled their uh, deficit by uh, a few points, and they're only behind by seven. But uh, Ashford has an opportunity here on a one and one to add a couple of points in. At the free throw line is number 22, Anthony Crawford. Big big shots here can put two points up. You know, just uh, back with three minutes and 50 seconds left, Ashford had a, a, a convincing 14 point lead in this game, but Bullock County has fought back, and they have cut the lead down to seven points. Uh, with Crawford hitting that shot, it puts it back up to eight, and now it's a nine-point lead, but uh, Bullock County, they have a plan on, on uh, winning this game. Yes, they do. They've been uh, coming down, trying to take those three-point shots. And like I said, I tell you, if Ashford pulls this game out, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Who's going to be the difference in winning this game? Number 32, Chris Williams with this defensive play. He has uh, played above and beyond the call of duty tonight, picking up the slack everywhere. And uh, we get a traveling call against the Hornets. That's I think, a turnover. I, I think the Hornets got a break that time because it could have very easily been called a, a charging foul, and they, got, uh, they were called for traveling. All the way across over to uh, number 32. Damon Love, excuse me, Bracken takes a three-point shot and misses. So the Hornets are back in action again. And we got a foul called on 22, uh, Anthony Crawford. And uh, the Hornets are going to come to the, no, it's, it's still outside. They're not they in the bonus yet, so uh, they won't be going to the foul line, but uh, Ashford probably should have uh, pulled that shot back out and took some more time off the clock. Number 20 puts it in, DuBose, 52-45, minute 50. To Bracken, to number 32, Chris Williams. It's a seven-point game, 45-52. Ashford's leading Bullock County. Lee over to Williams. To Lee. To Bracken. And a great baseline jumper up in there. Puts it in for a basket. 54-45. That was a nice baseline move by Bracken to put that ball up. But number 20 comes right back and scores a three-pointer. DuBose. I'll tell you, Bobby, you don't see the word panic or the look of panic on anybody's faces on this Bullock County team. Oh, they've got confidence. They've got confidence they can come back and win this thing. And uh, they're only down by six with a minute 11. But of course, uh, Chris can, can uh, add a couple of points here if he uh, can put these uh, two free throws in. I tell you, they were down by 14 points with three minutes and 50 seconds left in this contest. 
and they have trimmed that lead down for just six points with 111 left in this game. And uh, the uh, coach uh, Edward Huffman asked for a full timeout to talk to his troops. They are, they act like they've really got their game plan together. I tell you, that that's when this team started turning around. He called a timeout with 3.50 left, and they came out and scored five points in about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And they have continued to pour it on. Ashford has scored some points, too. But uh, I think that was the turning point in, in, in this game to make it a much closer game was after that timeout. Now, hopefully this timeout won't be as productive as the last mm -hmm. one. Uh, Ashford has uh, continued to do well, but they've uh, made too many turnovers here in the fourth period. Yeah, the, the full court press has uh, really hurt them here in the late going. And looking across the way, the possession era is on the side for the Hornets. So we'll see if that comes into play on a close call. So when the game resumes, the Hornets will have the ball. It's a 54-48 game. The Ashford Yellow Jackets leading the Bullock County Stinging Hornets by... Uh, Six points at the line, excuse me, at the line is going to be number 32, Chris Williams for Ashford. That's yeah, a one and one for Chris. Chris Williams will be shooting one and one. They, uh, Hornets have one timeout left. The ja Yellow Jackets have three. All right. Chris Williams, game of his life tonight. Puts it up, and he misses. Hornets still in it. Williams had been pretty solid from that foul line so far tonight. That time he didn't get it to go in. And uh, we had a foul called. Uh, on 32. On 32, Williams. Just over a minute now. One second above a minute left. It's still a six-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. But the Hornets have the ball. Hornets is still not in the bonus yet. Number 12 takes his three. He misses. But they get a two out of it. I, I tell you, that time they were very persistent on the boards. They kept banging it and uh, until they got it. But that time, Ashford did a good job of getting the ball down court before the defense could get back and put up the basket. Terrence Thomas made a big two. Uh, but uh, number 14 comes back and makes a three. Mims, it's 56-53. Wow, they have cut this lead down to three points from a 14-point deficit with just under four minutes to a three-point deficit with uh, less than a half minute left in this game. And we have a foul called on number 20. Uh, Randy DuBose, two-shot foul at the line is number 23, Nick Lee. I tell you, this, this, I can't say enough about this Hornet team. They are playing very cool and calm and collective. They are not, they don't seem to be concerned about the amount of time left because they have been successful in this uh, four period hitting those three point shots. Uh, let's, let's play the advocate here. Ashford's at the free throw line with a one and one. If they miss their shot, they've got roughly 28 seconds to, uh, to get a three-pointer, and it's tied. So we, we talked earlier in the game about how important free throws are that, that you make them because when it does get down to the end of the game and things are tight, the free throws are, 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 are very important. And at the free throw line is going to be number 23, Nick Lee. He's a sophomore, and he's, uh, he's going to be shooting one and one. He really, well, no, they're saying he's shooting a two-shot foul. So he's got a couple opportunities here. He needs to make one of them, though. 56-53, the Ashford's leading uh, Bullock County. This is a sub-region game. The team that wins this game will advance on to the region's region in Troy. He missed the first one, so it's going to go in play this time. And it's only a three-point lead for Ashford. He makes the second one. Four-point lead. You know, like I said, Bobby, they need to come up with something big defensively, and they almost do that time. 20 throws it up. 
Misses. Air ball. Pass for the ball. And you know, we talked about how important defense is. That time, Ashford uh, tied the ball up and was able to. And it goes, to, they get a jump ball, and the Hornets get it. That was a great defensive play and a good uh, heads up play by number 12 for the Hornets, uh, Christopher Tarver, tying that ball up and, and, and getting it. They're going for a three, and that time it was blocked. Ashford gets the ball out, three seconds, two, and he slams it on number 32. He puts the exclamation point on this victory, Bobby. That guy came out the second half. He took control of this game, and he put the exclamation point at the buzzer, slam dunking the ball. I'm telling you, he played the game of his life tonight, and that is a big win for these Yellow Jackets. Number 32, Chris Williams. Whoa, 57-53. Well, actually, it's supposed to be 59-53 because it was a four-point lead and they got, he got the two-point basket. I wonder, did they give him the basket? I didn't hear the buzzer go off. So, uh, well, I guess the basket didn't count. Uh, we haven't seen it. They haven't added it to the point total. Well, it's a win anyway. It's a victory. <laughs> and the guys are carrying number 32 off the court. They need to carry Chris Williams. And I told you, Bobby, I said, the difference in this game, if Ashford pulls it out, it's going to be number 32, Chris Williams. And that he did because he played a well of a basketball game tonight, Williams, defensively and offensively. Williams came up with a couple of big defensive play, plays in the third period. He came out halftime, and they were like a reinvigorated team. And uh, Williams led that. He, he, he came out energized. Yes, he and did. he energized the rest of the team, and he made some key plays to get this uh, Ashford team on the right track to pull out this victory. And what a victory it was. They get to advance on to the next round, and uh, we believe that's uh, going to be in uh, Troy on the campus of Troy State University next week. Right. This was the, uh, the sub-region game, so the winner of this game will advance on to Troy State University for the, the regional. And that'll be coming up uh, this next week, and uh, we'll see who the pairings will be. Uh, just a great win for these Ashford Yellow Jackets, and we look around this uh, gymnasium tonight, and there are championship uh, decals on both sides of the gym, one side for the Lady Jackets, the other side for the Yellow Jackets, and uh, the Lady Jackets advanced last night, the Yellow Jackets win and advance tonight. So this uh, Ashford uh, Yellow Jacket uh, teams, both the girls and boys team, will advance on to the Southeast Regions in uh, Troy, Southeast Regional in Troy, and uh, they all have an opportunity to advance there, and if they can come out of that um, Southeast Region victorious, they will advance to the Final Four in Birmingham. That's right, and, and uh, it, it'll be a great opportunity for fans in the Wiregrass to see some great basketball as these uh, high school area teams complete. I noticed in the paper tonight, they said it was 21 area schools in uh, sub-district uh, tournaments uh, tonight in our area. And that speaks for basketball here in the Southeast. Yes, it, it's, we've, we've seen a lot of action all year long uh, in the games that we've covered. And, and the level of play has just been outstanding in the competition and, and just the fan support, it, it's been great. And uh, if you're out there watching, make sure you call your cable company and let them know how much you appreciate uh, them carrying these games on television. And, and everywhere we go, we have people that come up to us and say, hey, we watch the games on TV and we really enjoy watching them. But what you can do for us is call your local cable company and let them know how much you enjoy watching the games. That's right, that's right. Uh, I was kind of hoping that uh, Coach uh, Henry would come out of the door and we could uh, grab him for a quick interview, but uh, uh, I think they're celebrating in their locker room tonight, so we'll, we'll let them do their celebrating, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, down the road. But uh, a final score here. Uh, any more comments before we wrap it up? Well, no, Bob. I, I, it, it was just a great game, and uh, you never saw the, uh, the look of panic on the 
Bullock County team, but the Ashford team, they smelled victory tonight. And by the leadership of uh, Chris Williams, they were able to win this game. They almost smelled the victory a little bit too quickly <laughs> and uh, let it get away from them, but uh, they poured it on here the last and, and pulled out the four point win. So the final score in Ashford, Alabama in the sub uh, region tournament, the Ashford Yellow Jackets are victorious over the uh, stinging Hornets from Bullock County by a score of 57 to 53. Good night.